Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Dimco Air Force One Supplemental Braking System here on a 2020 Lincoln Nautilus. So what is a supplemental braking system and why do we need it? Well, it's actually pretty simple. With a flat toe setup, you're actually required by law to have some sort of supplemental braking system on the towed vehicle. The reason we need to have this is Having a vehicle behind our motorhome here is gonna increase the force being applied to our motorhome when we're trying to come to a stop. It's essentially adding weight to our setup, putting more uh, stress and wear on the motorhome's brakes. By adding a supplemental braking system, we're gonna be helping stop the towed vehicle with an additional force there to help free up some of the wear and tear on the motorhome's brakes to help us better come to a more clean and effective stop. So there are many types of supplemental braking systems on the market. The Air Force One isn't the only one to choose from. However, it's one of the best in my mind. For starters, it's gonna be designed for motorhomes with air brakes. Now, in regards to that, there's one step further in regards to the towed vehicle side, and that's gonna be either a portable system or a permanent system. So the Air Force One is gonna be what's known as a permanent system. Now, a permanent system, as it sounds, is gonna be permanently installed on the vehicle. We can remove it, obviously, but what I mean by permanent is we don't have to do any setup each time we wanna get in our vehicle in tow. Sometimes it's just a flip of a switch, but for this one, it's actually gonna apply the brakes automatically in our motorhome. We don't have to worry about any additional setup each time we need to tow. Now, if we compare that to a portable system, a portable system isn't gonna have that lengthy install time for your initial install but it will take some setup each time we get in and out of the vehicle and we need to tow. So the Air Force One is a proportional braking system. And what a proportional braking system is, it's kind of how it sounds. So we're gonna be applying the brakes in our towed vehicle in a force proportional to that of us applying the brakes here on our motorhome. So for example, say we're out on the highway, somebody cuts in front of us and we really need to come to a fast and effective stop. Therefore, we're slamming on the brakes of our motorhome. Well, by doing this, we're gonna be sending a lot of force to the brakes on our towed vehicle here to help slow us down that much faster. Now, if we're moseying around in town, we're just coming to a slow stop at a stoplight, we obviously don't wanna send a ton of force to the brakes on our towed vehicle because they could then lock them up. Therefore, since it's proportional and we're just coming to a slow stop, we're not gonna be applying that much force here in our vehicle. So with our braking system here, we have a couple components that are attached between the motorhome and the vehicle. The first one is this little air coupler here. So this is what carries the air from the motorhome's brakes and applies them to the vehicle here. Now it's super easy to use and it's also coiled so you don't have to worry about it dragging the ground. We have these little air coupler adapters on either side here. There's gonna be a collar. You simply pull it back to release it. And the same thing for the motorhome side. It's super easy to set up each time. And again, it's lightweight and it's coiled so you don't have to worry about it dragging the ground. So the other thing that we have in regards to the connection between the vehicle and the motorhome is the breakaway lanyard here. So if you're not familiar with it, um, the system does come with a breakaway feature and the breakaway feature is simply gonna activate the brakes here on our towed vehicle should it become unhooked from the motorhome by losing our mechanical connection. So another feature that this system has that I really like is this monitor light which we have mounted on the rear view mirror here. So what the monitor light does is, it essentially is gonna illuminate that light whenever the brakes are being applied here in our towed vehicle. Therefore, when we're driving in the motorhome, we could easily just look in our side mirrors there to see if the brakes are on in our towed vehicle. Because we obviously don't wanna be driving down the road on the highway with our brakes locking up. So it's a good indication of false braking. So you can see here, that nice red LED light is gonna easily let us know that the brakes are on in the towed vehicle. So in regards to installation, most everything is gonna be hidden behind the scenes here, so we're not really gonna to have to look at too many things. Therefore, we're gonna keep the factory appearance here of our vehicle. Now, there are gonna be a few simple modifications needed to install this system, but it's really not too terrible. Most everything is pretty straightforward we can actually go ahead and walk you through this entire process step by step now. So the first step of our installation is we need to find a place to mount our operating unit. 
Now, if we come over here to the driver's side, directly behind our bumper beam here, we have a nice open section here attached to our frame rail. You can see we have our operating unit positioned there now. So in order to mount it in this location, what I did, I used some double-sided tape here on the back side just to sort of help hold it in place. And then we can use a couple large zip ties. If you don't have the large zip ties, you can bridge some of the smaller ones together. And then we have it wrapped around the frame there, securing it to both of the holes in the flange for our operating unit. So if we take a look down below, we can sort of give you a better view of how the operating unit is mounted here. So again, just attached to that frame with a couple zip ties, holding it nice and secure. Now you can mount the operating unit in a different location if you see one that you think is better but I really couldn't find too many other spots on this vehicle and this is gonna be pretty much shielded behind the bumper, so it's gonna be a great spot. So the first connection we're gonna be making just to get this out of the way is our vacuum connection. Now, because this vehicle has electric assisted brakes here, we don't need to provide any extra pressure to the operating unit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out a two to three inch section of our vacuum hose that comes in our kit here and then we're install a check valve here with the black side facing away from the unit there. So this is pretty much gonna be plugging the hole. And if you have some trouble installing that check valve and on the barb fitting through the operating unit, just take a soapy water solution, spray it down, and then it should slide right on. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up the input side to the operating unit, the one labeled air in. So these two air connections we're gonna talk about next. They have push to connect fittings on there. So basically we just wanna cut our airline tubing as straight as we can, press it into that fitting and then pull down to lock it in place. So then we're gonna take this one here and we're gonna route it over here to the front of the vehicle. This is gonna be attached to the port, which is then gonna be bridged between the motorhome and the towed vehicle via our umbilical cord. So if we just follow the airline tubing here up and over the base plate kit, over across to here, now, if your model, if your particular model has the active air dampeners, you're not going to be able to run your lines here in front of the intercooler. You're going to have to secure them to some part down here, preferably the base plate kit. But if you don't have it like our particular model here, you can easily just run them through the little slots here. Over, back behind the sensor, and then over to the bracket here, which is, comes in your kit. It looks just like this. On the back of there, we have a push to connect fitting. Now, in order to secure this, this process is really going to vary depending on what base plate kit you have. Um, we had a nice cross section here for our base plate kit, so I just went ahead and took a no drill bracket, a short one. We do sell these here at eTrailer, or you can make a bracket of your own. I just simply drilled that directly into the base plate kit, and then I drilled and attached our bracket for the air connector. So next thing we're going to do is go over the air out connection here. So again, same thing as the air in. Cut your airline tube nice and straight, push it into the fitting and pull down to lock it in place. Then we're gonna be routing this one underneath the vehicle and up into the cab. So there's gonna be a nice little cavity here. You can run your airline down through there and we'll show you where it comes out underneath. So your airline tubing is gonna come around this area. It's gonna come out about this area here. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a socket here and you're gonna loosen these two screws, actually remove them, just set them aside to allow us to sort of pull down the splash panel to give us more room to work. But then we're just gonna take our airline tubing, we're gonna be run, routing it above this panel here, all the way back here, up and over the rear cross member section. And then we're gonna actually gonna have a grommet here in the bottom of our floor pan. So I just pushed that grommet up through there and then I took our airline tubing and I just shoved it through that hole, um, put all the extra slack in there, and then we'll deal with that a little bit later when we hook up our actuator. So now we're gonna turn our attention to the breakaway switch here. So again, the installation of this could vary a little bit depending on which base plate kit you have. Our particular base plate kit here has a nice little standoff tab that we can mount our breakaway switch to with the hardware that comes in our kit. So we're gonna go ahead and mount that breakaway switch and then we have two wires coming out the back of it. And again, we're just routing it back behind this little panel here, behind our sensor, over through here. You can see the orange and black wire. And then we're gonna pretty much come under the frame here over the base plate kit to where our wires are gonna be in about this area here. So there's two connections we need to make right off the bat here. So the black wire coming from the breakaway switch is gonna to go to one of the two wires coming from the operating unit. 
and then the other wire coming from the operating unit, it doesn't matter which one was goes to where. We're gonna ground that to the frame here using a ring terminal and a self-tapping screw that both come in our kit. Now, as far as the orange wire goes, behind this electrical tape here, we went ahead and cut that orange wire about this point, and we used a butt connector. The other side of the butt connector, we're gonna attach the other end of the orange wire to, and you can see that sort of here. We have that ran up into the engine bay, and we'll show you that connection in a moment. But on the end, before we attach the butt connector to the wire going towards the breakaway switch, we have another brown wire that comes in our kit that we need to tie into with that. And that's actually gonna go into the cab of the vehicle. We're just gonna simply use that same path that we just showed you for our airline tube. So we're gonna need that airline tube and that brown wire up in the vehicle, and we'll show you those connections a little later. But now let's head up top. We'll show you the connection to the battery with our orange wire. So here's where our orange wire is gonna come up at. Now, granted, we needed to extend ours a little bit. You may need to as well, depending on how you routed it. These are all just suggestions where you can route yours. There's not an exact rule where they need to be. You can see ours actually looks a little red because we did have to extend it. We used a red wire. But regardless, we're gonna be running this up into the positive battery terminal, which is what you can see here with a fuse line in between. So it's pretty simple. The other end of our uh, orange wire here, we're gonna attach a butt connector. You're gonna attach the other end of that butt connector to our fuse holder here. And the other end of the fuse holder is gonna to go to a ring terminal, which gets attached to our positive battery terminal. Now, your positive battery terminal is gonna look a little bit different because we actually have uh, replaced ours because we installed a battery disconnect. But either way, you should just be able to loosen a nut, secure the ring terminal, and then re-secure the nut. We wanna make sure that our fuse is not installed just yet. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come inside the vehicle here down in the driver foot well. So you're gonna to have to peel back this carpet here. You may or may not need to remove a few of these panels here on the side to do that. It just depends on how much you wanna give yourself room to work. But essentially behind this carpet here, we're gonna get this foam padding that's basically attached to the firewall. So what we need to do is we need to cut out a good section of that foam padding around where the steering column is here, preferably closer to the passenger side. But once we get that cut out, what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna mock up the actuator on the brake pedal arm. And then once we do that, we're gonna sort of just see where we're gonna be mounting the anchor point for the actuator. So we need to do a couple things when we mount this anchor point. Number one, we need to be ensured that the angle to the actuator isn't too much in either direction. It needs to be relatively straight because what we don't want happening is we don't want that wire binding on the side of the actuator can actually cause that to break over time. So we're just gonna roughly mock up the actuator here on our brake pedal arm. You don't wanna go up too high and you want the brake pedal arm to be about in the center of our bracket here for this initial adjustment. Once we have it loosely mocked up on the brake pedal arm, we're gonna have a three hole bracket in your kit here. So our three hole bracket is our anchor point. The bottom two holes on our three hole bracket, we just have some self tapping screws securing that to the firewall. You can see those here. So here's a closer look at that three hole bracket. And again, the bottom two on those, we just have self tapping screws that come to our kit. And then the top one here, we're using another one of the self tapping screws that come in your kit, but we're sandwiching between that three hole bracket, our anchor point that comes pre-installed here on the actuator. Now you may or may not need to adjust the slack there so you can give yourselves enough room to reach, but we also don't want too much slack as well. So you can see here, we have a little bit of play in our line, but not too much. That's pretty much what we're gonna be looking for. Once we think we get it in the correct position here, we can go ahead and tighten up the actuator. You can actually move it forward or back more to decrease or increase the slack here on the line as well once you have it anchored to the firewall. But then we're just gonna tighten down these nuts on the side here until this bracket starts to bend and conform to the brake pedal and it's nice and tight. So once we have our actuator installed, we're gonna be installing our monitor light. So in your kit here, you're gonna get sort of a coil of wire with an LED light strip on the end. This is the monitor light. So on the LED light strip, the back side is gonna have a little backing plate there. We'll take off and that's gonna reveal the adhesive, which we can then stick to the back of our rear view mirror just like so. And then we're gonna take the wire that comes off the back of that LED light strip. We're gonna run that up over this panel here 
following along so we can tuck it back behind the headliner, come all the way over here to the A pillar, and then we just have the wire tucked behind this panel. And then on the outside here between our weather seal and the A frame pillar, we have it ran all the way down back behind this panel here until it comes out underneath the dash here. So once we get the wires from the LED light down here, we should have a black and a red wire. We're gonna be attaching these to the wires that go from the reed switch that's mounted on our actuator here. So this is what our reed switch looks like. There's gonna be a little slot here in the bracket on the actuator. The reed switch is simply going to insert into that little bracket. Then you're gonna take a tiny flathead screwdriver and there's gonna be a screw on the end of the reed switch. Once we screw that in, it's going to expand and hold the reed switch inside the bracket. But then we can go ahead and make our connections. The black wire from the LED light is going to go to the blue wire from the reed switch with the ground in between. So we'll need to take a bit of wire lead there with a ring terminal on the end of it, tie that into the frame with a self-tapping screw, and then connect that with the buck connector to the blue and black wire. Then we're gonna take the red wire from the LED light and attach that to the black wire from the reed switch. And then the last connection we'll make is the brown wire from the reed switch. That's gonna to run to the brown wire that we routed underneath the floor earlier through that grommet that we had tied into the power wire running from the battery. And just a little note, we showed you earlier us pushing the wires through that grommet there in the floorboard. And if you're just sort of wondering where that is in the vehicle here, the grommet is gonna be located sort of in front of the gas pedal here, sort of in this general area. Once you pull the carpet up, you'll be able to easily access those wires. But once we have all the wiring done, the final step here is to mount, or rather connect the airline tubing that we ran inside the vehicle here. That's gonna run down through the carpet here, all the way back and over. It's gonna come out somewhere here and then we're just gonna simply attach that to the airline fitting coming from our actuator. And that's gonna do it today for our look and installation of the Dimco Air Force One Supplemental Braking System here on our 2020 Lincoln Nautilus.